Well, let's hear it from Dave. Baseball is a joyful religion. Base is loaded. Anticipation. Is it yet? One. The inning, they're out of the inning. You see, since the age of eight, baseball has been the spiritual side of my life. You go to church. The ballpark has been the altar of my life. Well, I knew him as a TV personality and, uh, and also as a, a degenerate baseball fan. He was Frank Quillacy was the kind of guy Dave liked to talk baseball with. In the Minnesota fifth, Koufax gets ready to face Frank Quillacy with one out. Quillacy was a plugger. He, he played for the Twins in the 65 one. World Series the against the Dodgers and later managed the team. In the air. And by the time Johnson recovers, Quillacy has an easy double. He loved the game itself, but he also knew the game. And uh, that's what was fun. Now here's Ben Ogilvy. Everybody misspells his name. They call him Ogilvy. It's Ogilvy. You've got to know these things. See how they spell the name? O-G-I-L? It's not O-G-I-L. It's O-G-L-I. Ogilvy. Please. He blood, sweat, and tears about baseball, and uh, we always had great conversations. Not only as a player, but also as a manager. He used to come in, and, and uh, he always used to ask me why they weren't playing me. <laughs> and I said, go ask them. <laughs> the other night, listening to the Twins game, I heard Herb say the average length of a major league game is three hours, 13 minutes. Time consumed primarily, I would venture to say, by the preposterously ponderous practice of pitching changes. The game of baseball may have changed, but Dave's love for it never wavered. Baseball is a memory. Standing room only at the new Metropolitan Stadium today for the season's opener, which saw Wichita drop the Millers 4-2. It was a great day for a ball game. Were you there? Dave was there when the Twins played their final game at Met Stadium. A sad day for baseball purists, an even sadder day for Dave. And next year, this baseball team will be playing out its comic opera in a convention hall that stands as a monument to man's fascination for the vulgar and the tacky. When the game's over, I'm going to sit here for just a few minutes and weep. Well, Dave, uh, he hated the Dome. He just hated the Dome. He couldn't believe that they would build such a monstrosity of this. And this belongs in a circus. It's a tent. Oh, did Dave hate the Dome. Bob Casey and Dave played baseball together when they were kids. The man behind the voice sits behind home plate in a caged-in box affectionately called the hole. PA announcer Bob Casey is an institution here. One day, I don't know where, he snuck in. And he's out uh, on the field before batting practice of the 87 World Series. And I yelled at him, what are you doing here? You hate this place. He says, shh, Casey, it's only a game. <laughs> In one of the Twins' championship series, Dave put his prejudice aside and bought a ticket 19. to a game. I know about these seats. A friend told me about them. Said they were three blocks north of Washington Avenue. I see he was a block short. Before the Dome, one of Dave's favorite targets was Calvin Griffith, once the Twins' penny-pinching owner. You have been in this area long enough to know that the fans here are sufficiently knowledgeable and sophisticated about the game of baseball so as not to be lured into the stadium by an insulting, hackneyed Mickey Mouse promotion like a free baseball bat. I understand he was a big pitcher for a WCCO softball team, and I understand he had a pretty good record there, and... Uh, uh, playing against the boys and the girls and uh, I know that he certainly enjoyed the outdoors and everything else and uh, I'm sorry that uh, we couldn't get him to pitch down here in the dome for us because uh, the way he could throw that ball underhanded and overhanded and everything else he would be very deceiving for the hitters. I think that uh, he would be a guy that we could afford, I could afford. I can't get this guy for some reason. He bugs me. Why can't I pitch to him? I can't get him. I can't get that guy. What is it? I don't like him. Dave had such a passion for the game, not just as a weekend warrior, 
but more importantly, as a fan. Sorrow? Certainly, there is sorrow. But isn't it sorrow that brings the faithful back to worship again and again in search of hope? And isn't hope the counterpoint of sorrow? Isn't yesterday's failure the springboard to tomorrow's triumph? But today, today, those bums, oh, those bums.